the South African sun will literally cook you alive. It has to be well over 100 degrees out here right now. There's no sign of animals anywhere. There's a nice flat one. Snake, right there. Wow, look at that. It's a puff adder. Ooh, it's getting a little agitated there. When you think of South Africa, your mind likely pictures vast rolling grasslands, classic savanna, strewn generously with herding hoofstock and stalking predators. Yet much to my surprise, several wilderness stretches throughout the Eastern Cape are also blanketed with impressive mountain ranges. Today we are exploring a private stretch of land in the Bevian Skloof Wilderness. Managed by the Reserve Protection Agency, this 25,000 acre sanctuary is the perfect place to explore for animals and has gone virtually untouched by man for over a century. All right. Come on, Coyote. Some serious off roading here in South Africa. On our way today out to look for reptiles under the heat of the sun. Good chance of finding lizards and diurnal snakes. Stay tuned, we'll see what happens. Hang on, guys. Woo! Slow down, Mario! This guy's a madman when he's driving. Aside from the miles of rock-strewn roads that intricately lace this land like a network of adventure-pumping veins, we may as well have been the first humans to ever step foot in this wild place. Eventually, the roads do come to an end. And the only way to traverse deeper into the unknown is to trust one's own feet to lead the way. So we abandoned our vehicle and set off to see what we could find. The mid-morning sun quickly brings an incredible heat to the surrounding environment, making it nearly impossible to function if you are a human. <sighs> I'll tell you guys this much. The South African sun will literally cook you alive. It has to be well over 100 degrees out here right now. There's no sign of animals anywhere. I think our best bet at this point is to start looking in the shade. Say what, that's where this animal wants to be. Woo! Reptiles typically thrive under these conditions, activating off of the sun's powerful rays. Yet much to our sweaty dismay, the sun was already so intense that I knew our best chances of encountering scaly beasts would likely happen if I gently flipped over flat rocks. These safe havens provided a much needed relief from the blistering rays and also served as an ideal hiding spot from potential predators. Rock after rock I flipped until finally I flipped a winner. This is a nice flat one. Snake, right there. Wow, look at that. It's a puff adder. Are you sure? Oh yeah, 100%. And look at that cryptic patterning, perfectly blended into the environment. Almost looks like spider webbing across its back. Wow. Now, despite the fact that this is a very small snake, they get a lot bigger than this, it is still incredibly dangerous. All right, it's gonna be hard to balance him on the end of the snake stick and get him up into the shade. So what I'm gonna do is actually place him inside of my hat. Whoop, there we go. Nice. Look at that. All right, come on up here into the shade. We want to keep him out of the sun. Look at this little snake. You tilt my hat down there. He's, he's totally comfortable inside of the basin of my hat. Now, no, there is no magic trick where I put the hat back on top of my head and pull out a dangerous viper. But what I want to do is here's, actually, this is a perfect rock right here. Check that out. Nice and light in coloration. Let me see if I can get the snake to just coil up on this rock so we can get it up close for the cameras. All right, here you go, little buddy. There we go. Ooh. I'm hoping, sometimes when you just cover a snake up, it feels protected. So my hat over top of it will hopefully form it into a little tight, compact mass. And we can get some good shots of it. Yes, look at that. You can see it puffing. Now what I wanna do is very carefully lift up this rock. That's a risky little game right there. But as long as I keep my fingers under the rock, I will be just fine. Look at that snake. Beautiful in coloration. Now, let me 
use the snake stick here. Get a tight zoomed in shot of that snake's face. And you'll notice that while this is a viper, it is not a pit viper. And unlike rattlesnakes or the fair lances that we've encountered in Central and South America, you will notice that it has an eye and a nostril, but no heat sensing pit. Now this is an ambush predator. And this is exactly what they will do. Stay curled up in a ball with that S shaped curve to their neck. You can see there, you see how it's puffing up its body? Right now it's saying to me, coyote, I'm a big snake. You don't want to get any closer than this. They're very fast striking. All they need to do is lash out that head, inject venom with those fangs, and you're gonna be in a world of trouble if you're filled with that cytotoxic venom. Now once the prey has succumbed to that venom and then they die, the snake will slowly move in and it will have a meal. And oh, it's getting a little agitated there. You see that here, let me lower the rock down, take the snake away from my face. This is why they are called puff adders. Now the puff adder is responsible for more bites than any other snake species here in South Africa. And that's because they are oftentimes found in close proximity to humans. You'll often find them in a residential area. Now, as you can see, these snakes don't have rattles, so they have no ability to warn you if you're close to them in the environment. So oftentimes people are bitten just walking through the underbrush. If this snake is curled up in a ball and it strikes out at your foot, you're wearing flip flops or sandals, whew, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. But this is not a reptile that you need to be afraid of. They're so perfectly camouflaged in the environment, oftentimes you'd walk right by it and never even notice that it is there. Now next to the Cape Cobra, I would say that this is arguably the most dangerous snake species here in South Africa. Let me just lower it down here a little bit and notice how cryptic its patterning is. I tried to point this out right when we flipped over that rock and found it, but here on this lighter colored rock, you can see how distinct its patterning is. Now they do have a very strong keeled scale patterning that runs the length of their body. Look at that, black and cream, which helps them hide between the light and the shadows when they're out there just before sunset and just before sunrise hunting for their prey. And notice how girthy the body of this snake is. Oftentimes you think of snakes as being nothing more than necks and tails. And this one seems to be all body with just one itty bitty tiny tail at the end there. Super cute. And this is a small one. I mean, this is maybe only a couple of weeks old. How big do they get? They can be about three and a half to four feet in length. Really? Enormous wow. in girth. I mean, this is a very, very large bodied snake. Like how big around? I gently set you down there. Easily this big around. Really? Yeah. Wow. Handful snake. Probably more wide body than any snake we have ever worked with before. Like I said, even though this is a small little neonate of a puff adder, it's still a really cool snake to be getting in front of the cameras. And no guys, I'm not gonna actually hold this snake by its head and show you its fangs. That's far too dangerous and this snake is very small. We wanna put as little stress on the animal as possible. Let's see if you can just zoom in there and get some really cool tight shots of its face. You can definitely see it lacks pits. Mm-hmm. Golden eyes. Beautiful. And the eyes blend right into the skin. Well, I'd say that was a pretty successful expedition, flipping over rocks all morning, and we finally come across one of the most toxic snakes here in South Africa, the Puff Adder. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's let this guy back under his rock. When it comes to dangerous snakes in South Africa, the Puff Adder is second only to the Cape Cobra when it comes to being potentially deadly. Their cryptic nature and ambush tactics make them particularly dangerous, as they are likely to be hidden and staying completely still. So a word of advice to the adventurous. If you are hiking in the Eastern Cape region, make sure to always wear proper hiking boots and be cognizant of each and every step, because the last thing you want to do is find yourself at the end of a puff adder strike. Hey, Coyote Pack! I have some exciting news. I am proud to announce that the crew and I are headed back on tour with Brave Wilderness Live. Our next shows take place in the Midwest and kick off in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Chicago, Illinois. From there, we will visit Royal Oak, Michigan, and finally, we return home to Ohio for two highly anticipated shows in both Cleveland and Columbus. Tickets can be purchased at the Brave Wilderness website, and these shows are certain to sell out. So make sure that you reserve your seats today. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Peace and peace.